Hey guys, Tammy here. And in this video, I'm going to ask you, are you being too nice to your narcissist? Now, that seems like a ridiculous question, right? For the vast majority of you, that's a ridiculous question. Usually, my mantra is be nice, be nice, be nice. I, have, I even have a client that I've had for about three years and she always tells me, I always hear you in my head saying, be nice. <laughs> so usually that's the train I'm on. But every once in a while, I have a client who's actually almost too nice. You know, why in the world would you be too nice? If you like this content, don't forget to hit like on the video and also subscribe to the channel so that you get notified as new videos are released. And feel free to share on social media. If you're dealing with a narcissist, you know how isolating and lonely that can feel. And we need to reach as many people as possible to be able to help with these issues. When someone is too nice to the other parent, a narcissist or not, but I, I think this becomes more problematic with a narcissist because they're very exploitative, exploitative, exploit, exploitative, am I saying that right? Exploitative, I believe. They're very exploitative of other people. That propensity towards exploiting other people is something that really comes into play when you're too nice, right? They're going to take advantage. They're going to use that against you. Um, and they're going to use that in any way they can to exploit the situation to their advantage. But I find that the person that's being nice is usually doing it in an effort to make things as easy as possible on their children. That's really, I think, our main thought is, gosh, how do I make this easier for my kids? Let me just try to be as nice as I can. Let me try to suck it up. Let me try to get along. Let me try to ignore all the vitriol and let me just try to be super duper nice in an effort to hopefully make this person be nicer and have things go better for our kids. I will just tell you flat out that never works. Okay. And here's why. First of all, um, I see dads in particular do this at the very beginning of a breakup. If the, if mom is the high conflict person or the narcissistic person, I think dad does this a lot of times in the beginning where they're like, okay, I'm not going to rock the boat. I'm going to try to keep everybody, you know, happy and let them adjust and it'll get easier with time and the kids will eventually want to come see me and all this stuff. And my experience is that doesn't happen. My experience is you move out, they get used to not seeing you and then they don't really want to see you. And, 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 and that can be mom too, not just dad. I just see it more frequently with dads. And it's not so much usually that they don't want to see you proactively. It's that they get accustomed to that, right? And they're in their home where they've lived and they're comfortable and they're in their routine. And if they're older, they have their friends and all that stuff. And they're just, they don't want to be disrupted to have to go stay somewhere that's different, that I don't know, that's unfamiliar. Um, and I don't have all my creature comforts of home that I'm used to um, and all those things. It just kind of, they naturally gravitate towards that routine. You know, we're creatures of routine. That's how we are as human beings. And so if you move out and you're super nice and you decide to be flexible and give everybody this time to adapt, what they will adapt to is the routine of you not being there and that will become the norm. And then what happens is year or two down the road when you start deciding, okay, look, I've had enough of this. I've tried to be nice. Nobody's getting on board. I'm going to start getting a little more assertive and getting my parenting time. And then the children don't want to go. And then mom refuses to allow you to pick them up. And then you find yourself standing in front of a judge. And suddenly you're in a position where you haven't seen your kids very much for the last six months, 12 months, two years, whatever it's been. And you've created an unfavorable status quo is what we call it. Unfavorable status quo in your case. Because courts tend to have a don't disrupt what's working kind of attitude. If you not being there and the kids seeing you minimally is what's been working, you have a higher likelihood of that continuing. Okay, so you have to be real careful with that in the very beginning. But I think even later on, when we have a parenting plan in place or whatever, one parent will be um, 
too nice. And what do I mean by that? Well, let me just be clear that I don't mean that being flexible and taking extra time is being too nice, okay? One of the things that I tell you on custody is if you want the advantage, you suck it up and you take your kids every single minute that you can. The other person wants to trade a day, sure. The other person's going to be out of town and wants you to take extra time, sure. The other person can't get the kid to the basketball game and needs you to transport them, sure. Not my day, I'll be right there. Like as much as you can make that work. I understand that we have jobs, we have lives, and sometimes we can't do those things, right? But as much as you can pick up slack in a custody situation, that works to your advantage over the long haul. And that's something that, that you want to make sure that you do. But expecting a very high level of cooperation in a high conflict situation or in dealing with a narcissist is a forlorn hope. Okay, that's only going to cause more problems because it's too much togetherness. Okay, it's too many points for potential conflict. And one of the things that the court does in cases, particularly high conflict cases, is they will want to try to eliminate all the various points of potential conflict. This is why we need very specific parenting plans with a narcissist. This is why we don't have something that says reasonable visitation to be negotiated between the parties, because that would make your life miserable if you're dealing with a narcissist, because you can never, you can never reasonably negotiate anything with them. So when you're being too nice, what that generally looks like is people will do things like, oh, let's share pictures. Look, I took this picture of our child when I recently took them to Disney World on vacation. Look at all the cool pics from our vacation. Okay, that's a prime example. Then what happens? All right, let me just describe for you what your ex sees on the other end. And this is probably true whether they're narcissist or not. It's just that if they're narcissist, they're then going to search for things to try to use against you in, in the pictures, okay? And so what will happen is they'll see the pictures and they're like, oh, wow, good for them. They can afford a trip to Disney World. If you're sending it to the person that pays you support, that person's going to be like, oh, look, I guess all my support money went to send my kid to Disney World this year. Or if you're the person, if you're sending it to the person that receives the support, they're going to be like, oh, well, I'm glad they only pay X amount a month in support, but they can afford to take the kid to Disney World, right? It, it doesn't matter which side of that coin you're on. It's going to be looked at negatively, almost guaranteed by the other person, or they're going to find things in the picture that they don't like the way you had the kid dressed, or they want to know who that other person is in the picture that they see in the background, or there's a picture of you and the kid. Well, who took that picture? And you know, the list just goes on and on and on. And I've even seen situations where people will send a picture of the kid in their house. Like maybe I took a picture of my kid doing something funny at the house and I send it. And then there's something in the background that that person hones in on that they go, oh, I'm going to call child welfare because, you know, there's a loaf of, you know, moldy bread on the counter or, you know, something stupid like that, that they hone in on. You have to build a world between the walls and or a wall. I'm sorry, I said that backwards. A wall between the worlds, between your world and the other parent's world. And being too nice is can be as problematic as being too high conflict. It's just a different type of problem. But that narcissistic person in particular is going to go searching for ways that they can use that to their advantage. Okay. So a, a picture is just one example. You know, the other, the other example that pops to mind is maybe expecting discipline to carry across both households. That's great. It's great if you have two co-parents that can actually pick up the discipline from one house and continue to implement it in the other. But here's the thing. I would say vast majority of co-parents can't do that. Even cooperative co-parents I think would have a hard time doing that. And then you add in the narcissistic component and you're almost guaranteed that that isn't going to happen. And even if they say they're going to and they make a commitment to you that they do, that they will, probably what will happen is the child will go and then it won't get carried over. And then the child's going to learn that, oh, 
there's a loophole. There's a way that I can manipulate, you know, one or both parents to where I can get out of the consequences of my actions or my punishment. Okay. So being too nice has its own set of problems. And you really need that boundary because just that level of interaction is another, like I said, touch point for conflict. And your goal with a narcissistic person is to eliminate all the potential points of conflict. This is why I say don't respond. On a lot of the messages, you hear me say, don't respond, don't respond, don't respond, unless you're under court order that you have to respond within a certain period of time. And then sometimes the response is just receive so that I'm saying, I got your message. You don't respond because any response is another point for conflict. It doesn't matter what you say. They're going to come back and argue with it. It makes no difference. You can say the sky is blue with clouds today. And they would be like, no, it isn't. It's all gray, you know, and they could be standing in the same place you are. Like it, it's just they're going to come back with some counter argument no matter what you say. And so, again, if you can think of it as what we're doing is going through and trying to eliminate all the different potential points of conflict, that's the reason for the not responding. That's the reason for not sharing pictures between the households. That's the reason for not, you know, getting on the phone and having a conversation and sharing about the child with them. That's the reason for not expecting discipline to carry across between the two households. That's the reason that you don't expect your routine to be the same as their routine. It will be different. That's okay for your child. Child can understand there's different rules in different places. They go to school every day, different rules there than at home. They can, they can adapt to that. What is most damaging for your child above and beyond everything else is conflict with the other parent. So if being too nice results in conflict, you've done more damage than good for your children. You're better off to eliminate that effort at cooperation and just parallel parent and make sure you have no conflict. Okay, if you don't know what parallel parenting is, it's a whole nother concept. Go out and Google it, look it up. <laughs> if you don't know what it is and you'd like me to do a video on that, comment on this video, parallel parenting, and maybe I'll do a video on that in the future. So I hope that's been helpful. If you'd like to learn more about my services, you can go to divorceuniversityonline.com forward slash VIP dash coaching. There's a link on that page where you can book a free consultation with a member of my staff so that you can learn more about my services and how I might be able to support you on your custody journey. See you guys next time.